Congress passes a massive COVID pork extravaganza, media panic over super COVID in America, woke insanity takes over a fancy school in NYC, and Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to the Buck Sexton Show. Thank you so much for being here. And it is for me my final show of the year because I'll be on vacation starting tomorrow. The Godfather Mike Opelka will be in for me. And I just want to say a few things before I dive into the news. Uh, First off, if you're listening to this on any radio station anywhere across the country, I hope you know that at this point you can always listen on demand if you miss on a station, the show. You can listen to the podcast on demand. And we are on all the platforms iHeart app, Spotify, iTunes. Please, my birthday is December 28th. I'll be 39 years old. And all I want for my birthday is all of you hearing this anywhere to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, tell one friend, just one person about this show and say, hey, it's free. Subscribe to the Buck Sexton Show on. Apple Podcasts, on uh, Spotify, Pandora. We're now on Pandora. And also make sure you're checking out BuckSexton.com because you can listen to the show there as well as we have stories posted throughout the day. So that's my first, my first order of business. My second order of business right now is to just say that we've had a great year on the show. It has been a bad year for America and the world. I understand that. But I did want to say for a moment, thank you so much to all of you who have helped us have our biggest ever year of growth, um, the most listening, the most podcast downloads, and we just keep doing better and better. And we're essentially at a point now where this show gets placed into a market and it does well. This show gets picked up by a station. The numbers go up. It's been doing this now for years, but now the momentum and the, and the reality of that is undeniable. And that's because of all of you. And I, I do think that this show deserves that listening. Uh, Producer Mark and me and the whole Freedom Hut team, we do everything we can to make it the most worthwhile experience possible. So if you'll excuse me, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of pre-birthday, pre-Christmas self-indulgence here. But I just wanted to tell you all, uh, thank you so much because we have had a great year. And it, it is because of all of you who listened to us and who trusted us in what is a very challenging environment, a very difficult year, no question about it. I think the show has been right. I think we've been more often than not uh, on the forefront of the battles for, for the truth, whether it's on the COVID lockdowns or on what's, what's happened with this election, on BLM and the movement over the summer. You remember I was telling you all these concession moves, all the negotiations Republicans are talking about, the pulling down of statues that this was essentially a spasm of the left. It was an outgrowth of rage and and power, a power grab on their part. It wasn't a good faith effort to try and rehabilitate or renegotiate or anything like that. They weren't seeking compromise. Uh, They weren't looking for converts. They were hunting heretics. And that's just those are just a few of the areas where I think I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done on the show this year. And I, I don't do as much self-promotion as I know a lot of other hosts do. Occasionally, I'll, I'll hear a clip somewhere or something, and people talk about um, how, how great they are. I am honored and humbled to have what I think is the most discerning and most insightful and loyal audience anyone could ever have doing what I do. And I see this all the time from the messages you send, and I also appreciate that you stick with me and with this show through very difficult times, which has certainly been the case. Uh, this year. So any of you who feel like sending me a happy birthday on December 28th, be much appreciated, but I will be on the beach with Snow Princess doing my thing. Now let's jump into the latest. Congress passed a massive pork-laden bill. Trillions of dollars of spending, $900 billion for COVID relief, and there's a lot of stuff here that's getting conflated, so I want to make this clear. Yes, it is true that the stuff that everyone's pointing out that's contained in the spending bill is not technically part of the COVID bailout portion of this. But it's also true that they waited to do all of this together, and that just makes it more difficult for us to hold anyone accountable. That just makes it more difficult for us to see 
who was responsible for what in this whole process. And it shows us that the, the government, there's still a, a real contempt that the ruling class and the elites have for the American people because at this moment of real panic and real suffering and pain across the country, which is still going on, you had members of Congress, powerful elected officials, who took this as an opportunity to engage in all kinds of, of buy-offs and pay-offs for favored constituencies. And they did this all together for a reason. That's my point. I understand there's a difference between the $900 billion for COVID relief specifically and the $10 million contained in the overall spending bill, which is the federal, federal government outlays, right? The omnibus, the overall spending bill that had $10 million for gender programs in Pakistan. I, I know that these aren't technically the same bill or, or the same effort within the legislative process, but understand this. Uh, they did this together so that they were, they were like pulling off all the Band-Aids at once, if you get my drift. They did this so that it was, we would all just be disgusted at the same time, and then we, would, we wouldn't really know who to blame. You know, for Pelosi, this is a good thing, because she delayed necessary aid, billions and billions of dollars of aid to people who are in a really bad place right now. You know, I've just seen some of the early reports on drug overdo- uh, overdose deaths for this year, and it's looking like it's going to be well over 80,000. That's not an official number yet, but that's the, what the early count is. We're looking at the highest year ever of overdoses in the United States. And remember, we had an overdose crisis for the last 10 years, and the number's been going up and up and up. So we're at the worst ever year for drug overdoses in the United States in our history right now, over 80,000 people dead. And you can't tell me that there's not a, a substantial percentage of those who have died who are not uh, doing what they think is a kind of self-medication of their despair, using opioids and other substances because of all the emotional, psychological, and physical pain that they are feeling. And they're feeling it in part because of the separation from other human beings, because of the loss of jobs, because of the destruction of businesses. So, yes, I understand that this is a a brutal time for the country. And I understand that there's no perfect answer here, but let's remember that there are some who are much more responsible for extending the misery for making this even worse than others. And Nancy Pelosi is very high on that list, as are many other Democrats. And, and yes, there's a lot of stuff that's contained in, in the bill that overall, even if we weren't talking about COVID stimulus funds or you know, COVID relief funds, whatever you want to call it, even if that weren't an issue, Congress is passing bills now that, that regulate performance-enhancing drugs for horses, and Congress is, is passing bills to send money to a whole array of countries. Uh, we're giving money to Sudan. Uh, we're, we're giving uh, a large sum of money to, to Israel. We're, we're giving money to a lot of foreign countries. Why are we doing any foreign aid this year? That seems to be a very fair question. I mean, any foreign aid, and I don't want to pick on any individual country. I, I don't understand why we're doing any foreign aid at all. The taxpayers are having their money sent overseas for what? Do you really think that we should be worried about democracy promotion in Pakistan right now? And, and let's be honest about this. How much democracy promotion do you think you're really getting in a country of 170 or so million people by spending $10 million? which is what the outlay was. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of democracy promotion you're putting on a very small amount of dollar bills, aren't you? And the list just goes on and on for these things that people are seeing. And, and, and one of my frustrations is that, yeah, everyone, everyone trashes Congress when this happens, right? People say, oh my gosh, how could, the, how could Congress be so um, inept and so dumb But they do this right before the Christmas break. They know exactly what they're doing. They do it right before people go off on holiday. Who's even going to remember this in the new year? Who's going to really spend any time at all thinking about this once we get into January? No, it'll be we'll have other fights. So they understand the game and they're they're playing it like pros. We think that they're there to put the interest of the American people first and make responsible decisions 
to help as many of us as, I, as, we, as they can uh, while respecting and defending the Constitution. That, that's really it. It's a pretty straightforward idea. They think they're there to sign their name to things that spend the public money in such a way that they will be able to get reelected. That's the primary goal of, of 95% of the members of Congress on, in both parties. This is bipartisan now, folks. This is both teams. And the government has, has closed down much of the economy, not all of it, but a lot of the economy. People are facing expulsion from their homes. We have a wave of, of evictions that, that is coming. And even if they delay it, eventually it's going to happen. There's going to be a reset. People are going to be kicked out of their houses in large numbers. The government sends everyone, what, $600? That's what we've got in here in the direct payment. If you fall under certain categories, $300 of additional unemployment. In, in the meantime, they send, uh, let me see here, and, and hat tip techno fog for this on Twitter, $135 million to Burma, $85 million to Cambodia, $1.4 billion for the Asia Reassurance Initiative Act, and $130 million to Nepal. Yeah, that's right. I, I lose sleep at night worried about whether they're going to fund the Asia Reassurance Initiative Act. That one does get me. That, that gets me really concerned. I'm, I'm very worried about that one. What would happen without that? And we all get angry about it, and then we don't really do anything about it. Uh, we were supposed to have the swamp drained, and I think for a lot of us, this comes, this is tough. And I know we're going to the holidays, and I... I just want to say that there's a lot that I'm optimistic about for this country and the future. And honestly, as long as I get to do this with all of you, as long as I can share the truth from the perspective of somebody who really loves this country and just loves Americans, but I actually love the American people. I have a, a fondness, even for all the libs, I have a, an innate and deeply ingrained uh, connection to my fellow Americans. I really feel that. And maybe, maybe that sounds a little corny, but we're going to the holidays. I'm just going to tell you how I feel. And I think we'll get through all this, but we have some battles ahead and we have some housekeeping to do. And we have to, we have to get ready for a lot of policy that's going to be, shall we say, suboptimal. That's coming our way. And, but we also have to be very honest about what has gone on over the last four years. And maybe it was an impossible mission to say that the swamp would be drained. But I, I'm here to tell you, and I think you already know this, but we should all understand the mission continues. I think Trump understands that, too. The mission continues. The swamp has absolutely not been drained. Politics in D.C. has not changed forever. In fact, what we see here is a giant empire strikes back moment from Congress. That's what this is. And that's why I want us all to be very focused on what we need to do in the future, focused on this, on these Georgia runoffs for the Senate and focused on the battles that lay ahead, because we still have a lot to do, friends. And we, we need to be happy warriors. We need to be energized and engaged. And yes, rest, relax, recuperate over this holiday as much as you can, especially for those of you that get some time off. God bless. And I know it's, it's a stressful time because of COVID, but we fight because it's the right thing to do, and that's what we will continue to do together. And that is the mission, the mantra of this show. That's why I always say at the end, shields high. I remind myself of that in life all the time. I can't tell all of you to hold your shield high if I won't do the same. It's not, not easy these days. Not easy to stand on constitutional principle. Not easy to feel like you're a person who the consensus the digital elite consensus of social media, of Hollywood, of the academy, of law schools, of the legal profession largely, of the courts, is standing against you. But we continue in this battle because it's the right thing to do, because ultimately it's for the future of the greatest country the world has ever known, which even on its worst days, even as swampy as it is, America makes the world a better place every day it exists. And you and I both know that, and we're both parts of that. So don't forget that. This holiday is a little different. It's tougher to see people. People are going to keep their distance. There's all these restrictions. And, you know, people are being cautious. And that means you're not going to see as many folks as you're used to over the holidays. But for the people who matter in your life, you can still send them beautiful flowers to bring them some holiday cheer 
with Bloomsy Box. That's what I've done. My girlfriend loves them. My family loves them. You can even set up a monthly subscription, and these are fresh cut flowers right from the farm. They stay looking beautiful for weeks. It's incredible. And we're getting you a great deal right now for this holiday season. You can reach out and see the look on someone's face over Zoom or FaceTime. When they get these flowers, it'll send you a photo of them. They look amazing. Go to bloomsybox.com. That's B-L-O-O-M-S-Y box.com. Use the promo code buck. That'll get you 15% off and free shipping. Bloomsybox.com. 15% 15% off with promo code BUCK, and we'll get you free shipping. Send some holiday cheer to people with Bloomsy Box. In my mind, it is not all say Donald Trump is an authoritarian who does not believe in say It goes beyond Trump. We have got to ask ourselves, uh, why 70, rather than a 73, uh, voted for him. And, and we've got to reach out to those people. I think that there is, and I, and I think that to some degree, uh, Dean, uh, I'm sure a lot of my Democratic colleagues do not agree with me, but this is a reflection of the Democratic Party. I think if you talk to many of those, uh, you know, people, work class people who voted for Trump, they'll say, look, we know he's a liar. We know he's fully uh, But at least... You know, he does this, he does that, something that them don't. So we have got to figure out a way to bring our people together, black, white, Latino, Native American, Asian American, working class people, and say, you know what? You need a government that represents our interests, not one that divides us up by the color of our skin, where we were born, or our sexual orientation, whatever. Bernie Sanders, I miss him. But, you know, he was sort of mellow Bernie there. I've never heard him sort of. Not yelling. Notice when he gives a speech, it's up here, but when he's on the phone, it's kind of down around here. Um, they're not going to do any outreach. I, I just had to play that for you just to remind everyone of the delusions here of the Democrat Party. There's not going to be any outreach to people who voted for Trump. Not really. No, no, no. They, they didn't do any of it in the election process. Why would they do any election outreach going forward? I mean, why would they do any trying to bring us over to their side? What was the big idea? Think about this. What was the big idea the Democrats had that Biden stood for that really convinced people that this was the way to go? What what was the thing that they had that was supposed to make us all say, you know what? They've got a really good idea here. Let's go with that. It was Trump is basically worse than Hitler and Joe Biden is a guy who's a Democrat. That was the whole campaign. There, There was no idea this was run on other than Joe Biden isn't Trump. And the media try to convince as much of the country as possible that despite his ability to run the country pretty darn well for three years, the covid pandemic was entirely his fault. And so if you want covid to stop, you have to vote against Trump. That was their whole play. And it was craven, but it has gotten us to this place we are currently in. And so beyond beyond that, I would just say, you know, Bernie Sanders, I hope we hear more from Bernie Sanders this in the the months and years ahead, just because. I love doing the voice under Bernie Sanders wants to wish everybody a happy workers day, not a holiday. It's not about being holy. It's about the workers. It's about getting you as much cash as you can from your neighbor. It's not a gift. It's redistribution of wealth. That's what Bernie wants to do. He wants to redistribute that wealth. That's his version. That's his version of Christmas and Hanukkah gifts for all of you. Taking from your neighbor by the force of government and giving it to other people. And with that, uh, I guess that's the Democrat version of, uh, yeah, happy, happy, holi- happy holidays. Um, but there will be no outreach to Trump voters. There will be intended uh, purges of them, though, and get ready for that. They're going to want to make life as uncomfortable as possible for former Trump administration officials. Certainly the media will do it. So will many corporations. So let's remember we have to stand beside those who fight with us. <laughs> I recently got a crash course in home title theft, and you better pray this crime never happens to you because it goes after your most valuable asset, your home. Here's how it works. The bad guys, cyber thieves, they use a quit claim deed to kick you off, put themselves on, and take loans against the equity in your home, right? They kick you off the title, then they replace you with them. So they're acting like they're the people that can take out those loans, and they do. 
You don't find out about this usually until the payment demands arrive in the mail, perhaps even a foreclosure notice. You have to go with the experts I trust to protect yourself because the usual identity theft services don't protect you. But Home Title Lock does. Go to HomeTitleLock.com, use promo code RADIO, that'll get you 30 free days of protection, and you can check online to see if you're a victim of this crime and don't even know it yet. That's HomeTitleLock.com, promo code RADIO, 30 free days of protection, and you can check online to see if you're a victim of home title theft and don't know it yet. HomeTitleLock.com, promo code RADIO. It is a good bipartisan bill. Uh, It does, as different from bills that have been proposed on the Senate side by the Republican leader, it does things that his bill never did. And that is it addresses the food needs of the American people. Maybe 15 million children are food insecure in our country and adults as well. The only thing that can save us is to open the economy. If we give these tin pot dictators, these governors more money, they're less likely to open the economy. The answer is not printing up and distributing free money. It's opening the economy. We're not even debating the real answer to this. We're like, just print up the money and shovel it out the door. The deficit be damned. There you have. uh, There you have the dueling philosophies of the left and, well, some on the right. Uh, You have the dueling philosophies from Nancy Pelosi and Senator Rand Paul here. Pelosi says it's a good bill, which should terrify you, right? I mean, if Nancy Pelosi is happy, you should be very unhappy. That's a good rule of thumb about anything that the Congress is doing. You should be unhappy and and certainly worried uh, if Nancy Pelosi is telling you that some massive multi-trillion dollar spending bill meets all the needs that she feels that uh, are out there. And remember that this is a lot less than what she was demanding. What she was demanding was flatly ridiculous. I mean, she's accepting this now because, yeah, this is too much money. It's too much spending. We're $27 trillion, $27 trillion in debt. But she wanted, what was it, almost $3 trillion of new spending on top of all the trillions of spending that's already happened? I mean, that was just crazy town, right? Crazy town. But that's where Nancy is the mayor of Crazy Town, as well as being a member of Congress. I don't know if you knew that. Rand Paul's right. These bailouts, this continued, and I'm not talking about for individuals. That is deserved. But what we're seeing for municipalities and what we're seeing for multinational corporations, I mean, the money that's getting sloshed around in this thing, we should have, instead of all this, we should have a system that, puts a priority on getting us reopened as quickly as possible. What we should have here are incentives in place for companies and for states to take reasonable measures to reopen ASAP, because instead what you have here is America heading into this this long period of COVID winter, and there's no incentive for governors, for mayors, who aren't already trying to hold the line and stay open, there's no incentive for them to open back up and just take the risk, the political risk and otherwise, of having a spike in cases when they reopen. Even though, as we see, the massive spikes that have occurred right now, and there are pieces coming out from reputable places. I mean, the the Federation of American Scientists, for example, put out a study and it's from South Korea, and it's involves all it's peer reviewed. It involves all the contact tracing information from South Korea, which does a very good job of this. And it showed that there are people in an apartment building who live on different floors who got infected, and there's and they're all in the same air duct line. So the the conclusion is that there seems to be a possibility that COVID can freely circulate in the air through air ducts in a building. So you may not even be in the same apartment as someone, but you could still be infected depending on the airflow which then raises a lot of questions about that piece of cloth that says Biden-Harris 2020 over your mouth and how much protection that really gives you. But we're not yet at the point where we've broken through the censorship on this. So we're not really allowed to speak openly and honestly. I, mean, I can't hear on the show, but I have to be very careful on the social media platforms. I have to be very careful about what I eat. I'm not talking about just sharing data and information. I mean, anyone who looks at graphs right now of mask mandates, lockdowns, 
and cases and hospitalizations in states like California has to just result to gibberish and fantasy land explanations for why this is a really effective policy. The only thing they can say is the unfalsifiable, oh, it would be so much worse if we didn't do this. And I would just ask you to take a look at a graphic of California. Take a look at it and tell me if you think that it really could be that much worse than it currently is in California. I mean, how much more spread would really, is the whole state going to get infected in three days if it weren't for masking? I mean, really, it's absurd. But that's what they're saying. And if you challenge them, they throw a bunch of credentials that other people have in your face. And those people with those credentials have often been very, very wrong. And they tell you, shut up and you're a flat earther. End of story. That's where we are. I'm telling you, so much of this is driven by ego because there are so many people who believe they're really, really smart. Even though they don't know anything about science or biology or anything else, but they're really, really smart. They watch CNN. You know, they read the New York Times. And they've believed all this stuff all along. And no one wants to be the person that realizes that they've been in a cult. No one wants to feel like they were able to be brainwashed or swindled or bamboozled. So there's a tremendous amount of psychological resistance to accepting that people were wrong in this. And we're just going to keep looking and keep sharing the information, keep sharing the data, because their wrongness has cost for all the rest of us. Their wrongness results in lockdowns that continue on, in mask policies that are just a constant psychological and emotional and physical agitation. Uh, it, It results in dividing us making us think that there's some politicized aspect to the COVID virus, which is absurd. But they've made it very political. It never should have been political, but it has become such. Remember when they were telling us that don't make the, vi- don't make the mask political, just wear it? And now it's, we have cases because of those non-mask-wearing Trump voters, right? They just totally abandoned that whole, oh, let's not make it political, just do what I say. And then when what they say doesn't work, what do they do? They blame us for not doing what they say even though by all the data, people are limiting their travel, limiting their contacts, and wearing masks all across the country. 90% compliance with mandates is the best estimate out there. But don't worry, Fauci's on TV. I I got the vaccine. Don't worry. I'll be running your life. I'll be in charge of you. Dr. Fauci will be in charge of you for another 20 years at least. I'm going to be sitting around here telling you, no. You know, yes, I understand the vaccine has a 99% survival rate, but, you know, 99.99 actually if you're under 65. But uh, beyond that, I just, you know, I think you should cancel all fun things in life and give it a few more years because there's still virus, there could be mutations. Yeah, that's right. You think, you think they're going to let this go? You, you think they're going to give us back our freedom? No, you're going to have to take it back. You're going to have to hold people accountable. There are going to have to be lawsuits. There's going to have to be noncompliance. That's the only way this stops. There are going to be fistfights. There are going to be people that lose their minds when you walk past them outside without a mask on, even though they're the lunatics. They're wrong. People that look at you outside in the fresh air, walking past them, and you don't have a mask, and they think you're putting them in jeopardy, they are wrong. They are, they are just afraid, and they are easily brainwashed. But they are incorrect. You are not. Just remember that. Because it's going to get ugly. They're not going to go down. This tyranny will not go down without a fight. It is among our biggest challenges in 2020. And, I'm sorry, 2021. See, I can't even remember the year now. And the COVID lockdown tyranny. This is, because if we don't, yeah, eventually, maybe in 12 months, they'll start to really ease up. But no, they won't next winter. It'll be after that. Next spring, not this spring, next spring you'll start to feel like you can actually live your life again. Do you want to sacrifice that because of incompetent fools like Fauci and company? You want to make that? I don't want to make that sacrifice. I don't want to see what this country is like economically if we still pile trillions of dollars of just debt, future promises to pay on top of the debt we already have. That's, that's just catastrophic in waiting. That's what we know is happening right now. So we, we need to understand that They're not going to give this up. They're not going to let this go. And it's going to be incumbent upon all of us. It's really at the state and local level. Because at the federal level, the tyranny is is going to have all kinds of backup. So it's going to be at the state and local level. We have to push back. And look, I just hope they make enough room for everybody in Texas and Florida who's fleeing these stupid blue states that are destroying themselves. (laughs) 
and so many climate and health calamities are colliding all at once. It's not just a pandemic that keeps people inside. It's poor air quality. Multiple studies have shown air pollution is associated with the increased risk of death from COVID-19. Folks, we're in a crisis. Just like we need to be a unified nation in response to COVID-19, we need a unified national response to climate change. We need to meet the moment with the urgency it demands, as it would during any national emergency. And from this crisis, from these crises, I should say, we need to seize the opportunity to build back and build back better than we were before. He's explicitly saying, that they're, they're taking the whole COVID lockdown, fight the virus mentality, right? Remember, we fight the virus by doing whatever Fauci says. Don't question it. Don't, don't get into the details of whether or not it works. Just do what you're told. Be quiet, peasant. Here's your $600. Don't ask any questions. Right? They want to take that mentality. They want to take this approach from fighting COVID to fighting climate change. This is what I've been saying for months. And now they're and they weren't saying it then. I just knew what they were going to do. They love climate change because it gives them so much of what they have here with the covid lockdowns in terms of control. In terms of their ability to. Do what they want to do, shut down opposition and inflict themselves on every aspect of your day to day life. That's what this is really all about. And they have they, they create all the same uh, all the same uh, moral, you know, I- incentives here. They create all the same uh, fear and they, they attack the same fear centers of the brain. They say, well, if you don't do what we say about covid, people are going to die with climate change. It's do what we say or the whole world will die. And the whole the, the human species will cease to be. That is not an exaggeration. That is what the climate change activist class, and which the Democrat Party is completely in line with, that is what they say publicly. I mean, Barack Obama, when he was in office, would even say that climate change was the greatest threat. Democrats laugh at people. They sneer at people who will not say climate change is an existential threat. That's right. They believe that climate change to the human species is Along the lines of, and in fact, an even greater threat, I'll explain why, than, say, nuclear annihilation. So, you know, if if we fired all of our nukes and Russia and China and the other countries with nukes out there, uh, what, India, Pakistan, Israel, France, and England, uh, North Korea, there you go. Got them all off the top of my head. If if those countries all fired all their nukes at once, right, the belief is that we would have a nuclear winter and we would, human uh, human species would go extinct. And this would be an, an, an Ellie, right? An extinction level event. For those of you that saw that movie, uh, one of those disaster movies they used to make all the time. And they think that climate change is along those same lines. Climate change is an Ellie. It's an extinction level event. They believe this. And in fact, they think it's worse than nuclear annihilation because, yeah, we could all have these nukes, but you know, chances are governments aren't going to go so crazy. They're going to start firing off nukes for no reason. And people could happen, but hopefully it won't happen. They believe we are on a on a glide path because of climate change to our annihilation as a species. And there are people that benefit from the belief who don't really share it, but who will propagate it anyway. And there are people who are truly that brainwashed and delusional that they think that it is a a, an existential threat. They actually think that they worry about this. I mean, there are people that write articles now about how they don't want to have children because they don't want to add to climate change. There are people that write articles about how they, they lose sleep at night because they're so worried about the rise of the seas from all the, you know, they watch too much CNN and BBC and this other crap by people who just aren't able to think for themselves. You know, I often refer to people as, as stupid in the media, and I'll, I'll say this, and part of that is out of frustration. The things they say are dumb. But I know that it's not that they're actually, well, in some cases, I mean, there are people who are just utter morons. There really are. There are people who have low IQs who are not very bright, not very intelligent. And some of them have enormous media platforms. So I I, I do want to establish that that is a real thing. But there are a lot of other people in the media who, you know, went to fancy schools and probably got pretty decent SATs. You know, not that many in journalism, but there are some that fall into that category. 
But really what they have is cowardice more than stupidity. They always want to be considered smart. They always want to be considered on the right side of these issues. So they follow the herd. They stay within the crowd. And that is the, the worst possible mentality for someone who considers himself to be a truth teller. And journalists do think that about themselves. They aren't. It's the worst possible mentality to have. It's why journalism in this country has become such a preposterous joke. And it is. It is a joke. An unfunny one, but a joke nonetheless. But I, I want to be very clear. This is going to be a, a major challenge for us going forward. In, in the year 2021, the Democrats are going to be pushing amnesty and, and immigration, something you're going to be hearing about a lot on this show, because if we ultimately lose the battle on immigration, we lose on everything. We lose on everything because they're changing the voters. They're going to have voters who are dependent on the Democrat Party's largesse at the expense of taxpayers and citizens. And we're never going to win another. If they have, if they have amnesty and mail-in balloting, folks, we're done. We're, the Republican Party's not going to win another national election for a very, very long time. Um, so we're going to be focused in on, on immigration as an issue. But you're also going to see the continuation of this, this transfer of the urgency and the demand for your obedience around COVID-19 is going to transition to climate change. And I know for you and me, that's crazy. That's just crazy. It is. But remember, there are people who do believe it. Unfortunately, the Democrat masses from everything in their pop culture to their friend groups and social media, always reinforcing this absurd belief. Our climate change is not an existential threat to humanity, any more so than an asteroid uh, hitting the planet is an existential threat. And yes, it could happen. Are you losing sleep about it? Are you not having children because an asteroid may hit us in a thousand years? Who knows, right? This is, this is really a, a religion replacement. As I've always said, climate change is a religious belief for people who think they are too smart for religion. And then there are the other people who will benefit enormously from this. All the solar, pa- you know, the solar panel companies that need government subsidies and, and maybe even bailouts. You know, there are all the different you know, alternative energy uh, industries and carbon offsets and all this stuff. All these little pig snouts at the trough of the government's goodies that come from this alternative energy sector and everything else, that's going to be a huge component of this as well. So, my friends, we all need to be very aware of this. I know that it seems so crazy that it can't be real. They can't really want to do this, but I am here to tell you they do want to do this, and and they will, and we're going to have to fight them on it. And they're going to think that you're the one who's loony. 